So, echino echinodermata. These echino echinodermata means spiny skin. Echino echino means spiny and dermata means skin. Echinoderms usually inhabit shallow coastal waters and ocean trenches. They are marine forms. They are exclusively marine forms. They inhabit uh, shallow coastal waters and ocean trenches. Ocean trenches means deep parts of ocean. And these organisms include sea stars, brittle stars, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, sea cucumbers, the fishes. All these comes under um, phylum echinodermata. Phylum echinodermata, they are exclusively marine forms. Exclusively marine forms uh, and they inhabit even ocean trenches. The deeper part of ocean is known as ocean trenches and they inhabit these ocean trenches. Echinodermata, echino means uh, that is spiny. It has some spines on its surface of its skin and uh, uh, one of the peculiarity whatever we have studied till now we have studied it in such a way that all these organisms are bilaterally symmetrical forms but here in echinodermata the larval form the larval form is a free swimming form which is bilaterally symmetrical but the adult has a different type of symmetry which is usually radial symmetry radial symmetry and you will find few forms with pentaradial symmetry few forms are with pentaradial symmetry and most have five radii or multiples which is known as pentaradial symmetry around an oral aboral axis oral means mouth and the part that is present on other side of mouth is what is called a boral axis. So, if you have seen a starfish moving, actually its oral end is towards its ventral side and on the dorsal side you find its a boral axis. Its mouth, mouth is on the ventral side of a starfish and this, uh, the end where you have the mouth is known as oral axis and on the opposite side, the axis is known as a boral axis. Body is usually stellate. It is star shaped. It could be discoidal, circular or cylindrical. It could be either discoidal, circular or cylindrical. Body shape, it is star shaped. It is discoidal, it is circular or it is cylindrical. And they have an endoskeleton that is made up of calcium plates called ossicles. And they, they may be protruding out through the skin in the form of spines. That is why this class of organism is known as echinodermata. It is its, it's a internal skeleton. It is its internal skeleton made out of calcium plates called ossicles that protrude out of its skin as spine. That is why echinodermata, this includes spiny forms. So that projection is actually its endoskeleton which is made out of calcium plates and these calcium plates are called ossicles. And there is no distinct cephalization and segmentation. There is no distinct, uh, you can't call it as head. But I told you, we will be calling it as oral end. And there is no segmentation also, which is seen in echino. And uh, I told you, it has a symmetry. And this symmetry is uh, pentamerous radial symmetry. It is pentamerous radial symmetry. There are five angles. If you cut it like this, then that becomes uh, half. If you cut it like this, then that again you can divide it into half. Like that you find pentamerous, pentamerous radially, radial symmetry. 
where is the lava lava it has only one axis if you cut it like this it is divided into two equal halves which is known as bilateral symmetry and the larval form the larval form it undergoes metamorphosis to become radially symmetrical adults it undergoes metamorphosis to become radially symmetrical a water vascular system that is another characteristic feature a water vascular system or ambulacral ambulacral system which is a characteristic feature of echinodermates uh, that has small feet called tube feet that aid in movement feeding and exchange with environment for the time being you just uh, uh, understand that it has a water vascular system i'll explain it in detail the coelom is well developed and it is enterocoelous with two portions the periviscerous coelom and the hydrocoel which is actually the water vascular system and it is enterocoelous coelom it has two portions periviscerous coelom and a hydrocoel complete digestive tract that may be uh, either reduced secondarily and respiration by different types uh, may be according to its uh, group uh, different groups there is different types of respiratory organs which is known as dermal branchia which is seen in sea stars then you have peristomial gills in sea urchin genital bursae which is found in brittle star and cloacal respiratory tree which is found in sea cucumbers so different types of respiratory organs are one of the characteristic features of phylum echinodermata this includes uh, uh, we learn one by one uh, when we are studying different orders so it this includes uh, dermal branchia and this dermal branchia is actually found in sea stars then you have the peristomial gills which is found in sea urchins genital bursae which is found in brittle star and cloacal respiratory tree which is found in sea cucumber uh, sexes they are separate reproductive organ that comprises interradial gonads and separate ducts uh, to the exterior region fertilization is usually external development is indirect uh, with different types of free swimming larvae again based on its order there are different types of larval forms and uh, <coughs> majority of echinoderms they are capable of autonomy that is self mutilation and subsequent regeneration whenever a part something happens to that part it is completely destroyed and then regeneration takes place in uh, echinoderm water vascular system water vascular system this is starfish and uh, this is the aboral side and this is its oral side within the oral side within the oral side you find numerous tubes these are tube like structures or extensions which are known as tube feet which is its podia so this is water vascular system this is a water vascular system on the aboral surface is the opening of water vascular system which is known as madreporite or sieve plate aboral surface is there oral surface is there and on the aboral surface is the opening of the water vascular system which is known as madreporite water enters the madreporite and goes through the stone canal to the uh, this is the uh stone can madrip through madriporite on the aboral surface water enters it goes through the stone canal to the ring canal this is the ring canal okay i think you can see it this is the ring canal this is the stone canal and water enters through the madriporite it goes through the stone canal it reaches the ring canal water then passes through the radial canal radial canal is the canal that extends into each arm so aboral surface you have a madriporite a stone canal is there then at the aboral surface you have a ring canal 
and from the ring canal water passes through the radial canal which extends into each arm so when water enters into these uh, water vascular system actually these radial canals they have the extension which is known as tube feet so water entering water entering into these radial canal uh, that moves into lateral canal and these lateral canals actually they have the ampullae bulb like structure called ampullae where you have the tube feet so when water moves from the radial canal to the lateral canal and then to the ampullae so these are lateral canal small things are lateral canal and this structure is ampullae there you have the tube feet so water enters through this madreporite into this whole water vascular system and with the help of these the tube feet gets filled with ampullae gets filled with water which moves into the tube feet with the help of this tube feet the echinoderms move the echinoderms move with the help of these uh, water that is present in the tube feet and there's always a tube feet line uh, the grooves on the oral surface there the tube feet are arranged and this arrangement is actually known as ambulacral groove see here you have the ambulacral groove here both sides you have the tube feet i'll show you um, the next slide when you will find that uh, find a starfish moving excretory system that is absent nerve system nerve net nerve ring and radial nerves are present sexes are separate sexually and uh, sexual reproduction takes place development is indirect capable of autonomy and regeneration so echinodermata echinodermates they are divided into five classes class asteroidea class ophiroidea class echinoidea class holothuroidea class crinoidea echinoderm they are divided into five classes they are divided into five classes class asteroidea class asteroidea class ophiroidea class echinoidea class holothuroidea and class crinoidea so each class so asteroidea asteroidea this is the first one asteroidea you have the starfish the sea stars the sea stars and the starfish those are included in asteroidea and the characteristic features of sea stars the astropectin and starfish the asterias they live on hard substratum they are brightly colored they are brightly colored red orange blue or gray distinct oral and aboral surfaces are present mouth is always oriented downwards and the region bearing the mouth is known as oral surface whereas the upper one the dorsal one that is known as aboral surface there is a ambulacral groove on each arm each arm bears ambulacral groove on the oral surface anus is situated on aboral surface thin fold of the body wall called dermal branchiae which extend between ossicles function in respiration now these are thin uh, fold of body wall and it is called dermal branchia that is the respiratory structure that is seen in um, asteroidea aboral surface has pincer like structure it is somewhat uh, similar to a forceps pincer like structure called pedicellariae these are pincer like structure and it is called pedicellariae which clean body surface the debris that falls on the body that is actually cleaned with the help of these pincers they are minute structures and uh, development de development is indirect and the larval form is known as bipinaria or brachiolaria larva example is astropectin 
starfish this is the dorsal view and this is the ventral view here you have the uh, mouth this is the oral side and this is the aboral side these are tube feet and this is the ambulacral groove this is the ambulacral groove and these are tube feet which are arranged these are arms inhabit sandy bottom leading burrowing life central disc is large and pentagonal arms short and tapering arms bordered by marginal spines and marginal plates which are large and elongated pedicel area are sessile and tube feet are without suckers water vascular system this includes two or four pollen vesicles brachiolaria larva are absent in astropectin whereas the larval stage is bipinaria ophiroidea these are snake like or um, having a snake like uh, snake tail like arms it's known as brittle star which is the largest echinoderm class includes basket stars and brittle stars primarily reside and un reside under stones and in crevices and holes of coral reefs and they have thin brittle arms that break off and regenerate themselves quickly feed by raking food of the ocean floor with their arms and bottom of tube feet also trap food with the mucus strand between there the arms of ophiroids are long and sharply set off from a central disc the arms supported by series of ossicles vertebral ossicles actually they are the uh, endoskeleton and brittle star refers to easily breakable arms that is why they are known as brittle star and the serpent star which um, uh, it is called is because of its serpentine movement of arms the dermal branchiae and pedicel area which is present in asteroidia that is absent in ophiroidia tube feet lacks suction discs and ampullae madreporite is on oral surface ambulacral groove that is closed predators and scavengers mouth in the center and provided with five jaws no intestine autotomy and regeneration and regeneration occurs in these brittle stars because they have a brittle arm and the arm keeps on breaking sex is separate male smaller and they have a larva known as ophiopluteus larva this is ophiotrix which is known as brittle star ophiotrix spiny brittle star solitary fast moving carnivores body with central disc and five slender jointed arms arms covered by plates or shields and fringed with spines base of each arm bears a pair of deep grooves which is known as bursal slit through which mature sex cells they pass out and the oral surface of the disc bear five oral shields and podial pores which is a characteristic feature of ophiotrix ambulacral groove dermal branchia and pedicel area are absent and they also lack tube feet and uh, suction disc uh, tube feet lacking suction disc and ampullae sex is separate fertilization is external and the larval stage is known as ophiopluteus the next class is class echinoidea echinos means spiny sand dollars heart urchins and sea urchins body is enclosed in a shell or test the test is rigid endoskeleton that the internal organs are compacted in covering of outward pointed spine globular hemispherical disc like or heart shaped without arms they lack arms aristotle's lantern which is a complex jaw like mechanism that is used to grind their food is a characteristic feature of echinoidea locomotion by means of a tube feet ampullae and suction cups protection barbs on their long spines that are sometimes venomous sexes are separate and the larval stage is known as echinoplutius larva this is sea urchin 
Echinus or sea urchin. Hard rocky bottom dwelling forms found in coastal waters. They are globular in shape and center of lower surface bears mouth through which five hard white teeth project out. This is what is Aristotle's lantern. Mouth is surrounded by peristomial membrane and on the aboral pole there is anus and this anus is surrounded by periproct. The test of sea urchin is divided into 10 parts from pole to pole. 5 is ambulacra, 5 ambulacrals and the opening for tube with opening for tube feet alternate with wider sections which are known as interambulacral uh, grooves ambulacral region alternating with interambulacral region pedicel area are present in echinoidea respiration through five pairs of dermal branchiae surrounding the mouth aristotle's lantern is present which is a chewing apparatus and the larvae is known as Luteus larvae or Echinopluteus larvae. This is Aristotle lantern, a five teeth like structure that comes out of mouth, which is used for feeding purpose, which is used for feeding purpose in Echinus. This is known as Aristotle's lantern, and with the help of this Aristotle's lantern, uh, the sea urchin scraps algae of. The next class is class Holothuroidea. Holothuroidea includes sea cucumbers. Holothurion is sea cucumber found at all depths of ocean and they crawl over hard substances and bore through soft substances. They are just like a cucumber and their size is also somewhat similar to a small cucumber. Body exhibits bilateral symmetry. This is the only class that shows adult bilateral symmetry in echinodermata. The ambulacral groove, arms and pedicel area are absent. Tube feet around mouth which is modified into tentacles that function in gathering food particles. Skeleton. Skeleton is reduced to microscopic ossicles embedded in leathery skin. Madriporitis internal and respiratory trees are the respiratory organs that is present. Actually these respiratory trees are structures which are pair of tubes which are attached to rectum. They branch through the body cavity and animal pumps water into respiratory tree by contracting its rectum. It is detrivorous, feeds on uh, sand as well as waste particles. Auricularia larva is the larval form. Cucumeria body elongated with anterior end bearing mouth thicker than posterior bearing anus. Body five sided with double row of suctorial tube feet. Ventral and dorsal side present. It exhibits bilateral symmetry. An animal usually rests with its ventral side. Ossicles are microscopic. Elementary canal is simple tube which is coiled within coelom. And respiratory tree is a respiratory organ which functions as respiratory, excretory and hydrostatic function. Process called evisceration occurs because uh, digestive system is simple and Regeneration occurs in cucumeria and the larval stage is known as auricularia lar. Crinoidea, sea lilies and sea feathers, most primitive of the echinoderms and unusual in that the oral surface is directed upward like where all other uh, except in holothuroidins as well as um, holothuroidins and uh, sea feathers and sea lilies. Uh, ev the rest of all the classes, the oral surface is vent on the ventral side. Here it is on the upper side. Mouth is directed upwards with arms surrounding around the mouth. A oral surface is attached to the substrate by means of a bendable stalk. 
and uh, the stock is there then you have a calyx and attached to the calyx you have the oral the portion of the crinoid body attached to the stock is called the crown bears number of arms and the arms branches called pinules are also seen and arms and the pinules they have ambilateral grooves with suckerless podia or tube feet which secrete mucus the ambilateral groove it is highly ciliated and the cilia is used to direct food to the mouth uh, it feeds by means of filter feeding dolial area larva is the larval stage antidon found in warm tropical seas attached to coral reefs body consists of central disc called this is the calyx and upper surface of calyx covered by leathery skin called tegmen mouth and anus lies in this tegment mouth lies here anus lies in within this tegmen which is the upper surface of calyx body provided with five arms which are bifurcated at base arms bear laterally slender branches which are known as pinules and which are locomotory in function ambulacral grooves radiate from mouth to base of arms and bifurcate to arms dolial area larva and pentacrinoid larva are seen in crinoid class body plan of the sea star oral uh, surface mouth located on under side of the body a oral surface top of the body ossicles which are sharp protective spines made of calcium plates covered with thin epidermal layer and you have a pedicel area which is tiny forceps that protect and clean the body 